So our next segment is going to be us editing the podcast. And the podcast that we are editing this uh, next to a few weeks um, is going to be with Baruch Dach, um, who is the CFO of Algamor, which owns Simply Good, which grows spirulina for production use. And we're, we're going to take out clips and show you a little bit of visual uh, with that and try to give you a little bit of a glimpse into the podcast that we're putting together. And hopefully uh, soon we'll have that uh, on audio um, on full for you guys. So let's get started editing. Um, I think this industry is still in its very early stages. There are a few indications for that from the scale of the industry, which is tiny. We call it the algae industry, but globally we produce, what, 20,000 tons per year, something like that. It's tiny. It's not a real industry. It's nothing that can create impact. Most of the profitable companies produce boutique, high-end products. Each company does A to Z, everything from growing to processing to marketing to producing end products even. It's very singular. What would be the future would be the concept that maybe you grow it, you sell it to someone that then markets it. So we, we need to, to create that supply chain. Uh, we need to grow massively. We need to grow from 20,000 to 20 million in order to make a real change. We need to grow by a thousand times of the global capacity, current global capacity. I thought this was an important audio clip for us to understand that um, on World Algae Day, to, to remember that we're still, like Baruch says, uh, in the infancy stages of this algae industry that, that uh, a lot of us work in. And there's a long way to go. And um, I think people that uh, this company is simply good, and many others, the company that I work for, uh, Algatech, these companies uh, and uh, many others around the world are going to now start to set up this market and already have been for a long period of time uh, are going to now sustain it that it's going to be possible for other in innovations to come out of algae the, the more companies that we have doing this it, it's going to create a mass that then allows for it to grow even more. Uh, I hate to make it uh, a coronavirus sort of uh, um, analogy, but it, it is, it, it becomes systemic to the point that uh, it, it starts to spread everywhere. Um, and that's what we're gonna try to do here. Um, so let's uh, hear the next clip. I think that the biggest thing is to, to have perspective. And right now we are an infant boutique industry. We are not producing uh, food for the masses. We're, and I think that's the future of, of, of algae. If, if this industry were to survive, we have to, as, as a society, a global society, we have to uh, take up this challenge. It's not a challenge for a single person, a single company, or a single country even. I think with this clip, we sort of understand that, uh, um, you know, I, I 100% agree with Baruch that, uh, that we have to start to uh, become algae, the algae industry has to become a lot more in people's lives or in reality, like Jorg Ullman uh, reminded us before, um, the guy that started World Algae Day, uh, is that you know, we, we need to either uh, also, rem you know, remind people that algae is in their lives all the time and it's in their products it's even beyond that you know it's the oxygen that they breathe it's all these little things that people need to be aware how important algae is in their lives and you know like he mentions you know we, we are going to be hitting at some point in time a lot of people say uh, a lot of scientists say uh, experts say that we're gonna hit a, a point that that uh, there's not gonna be enough food uh, on earth and Algae is going to be very important uh, uh, for that, being able to sustain the human life on Earth. And, and, and even beyond that, when we finally get to Mars and off the planet, um, algae is going to be very important uh, in space for fuel, for food, uh, um, for feed, uh, for animals. We're going to have to you know, start to learn to work with nature a lot better than we have in, in for a long period of time. 
um, and hopefully people like Baruch and, and the rest of us will we'll, we'll start to do that. And uh, I, I think it's great to hear people like that on, uh, on World Algae Day and, uh, you know, that, that we're going to, we might, you know, we're going to be able to do this. That uh, we're, you know, according to David Attenborough, these are struggling times. According to everybody, these are struggling times in, in climate change. And, and algae can be definitely one of the answers uh, or one of the solutions to, to climate change. So let's, let's keep listening. We need to harness all the big players. We need to harness technologies and principles from big industries. We took as a, as a benchmark, we are looking at the dairy industry because uh, our fresh spirulina uh, uh, has a lot of uh, similarities with uh, dairy. From the protein composition to stability to applicativity, we can make things, as I said, like the yogurt and the milk and even meat from this uh, fresh biomass. Mm -hmm. um, and we can, I will talk about it in the next few slides, we can implement technologies from that industry. So we don't need to, like we've been doing in the algae industry, to reinvent the bicycle. I, I thought this was an important clip uh, to, to, to highlight because it, it, Baruch makes a good point about how uh, a lot of the industries, dairy, as he explains, but a lot of the industries that already exist, a lot of those technologies Algae farms and factories can already start to use. Uh, we use plumbing components and centrifuges to separate the algae from the water. Um, all those kinds of technologies already exist. So we are a, you know, the, the algae industry is, is really starting to, to, to grow in the past 50, 50 or so years. And now we're going to see a new phase into it. And what's really a good concept is to use technologies that we already know work from other industries and implement them within the algae farm that you're using right now. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, farms, you know, right now uh, could use that kind of technology. What's important to highlight is, is that this is a growing industry that, that could grow even faster if we implement other technologies from other industries. And doing that can help us start to spread algae into larger markets. Already right now, uh, you know, when it comes to, to microalgae, not, you know, not only when it comes to microalgae, but when it comes to macroalgae as well. Um, we are overfishing the oceans and if we do that with kelp and seaweed, uh, we're, we're, it's going to be destructive to the biodiversity and the strength of the ocean. And, you know, us being able to grow things on land like fish or seaweed and microalgae is going to give the, us a, a leg up in, in climate change to find a solution, to find new technologies that can help us in the future.